Welcome to another episode of The Vegan Pulse. I am your host, Nancy Arenas. And today with me, my guest is Gabriel Garden with another segment of Making Sense with Gabriel. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Hi, Gabriel. How are you? Doing well. How about you, Nancy? I am doing great, especially because we're doing another segment of Making Sense with Gabriel. <laughs> yeah, raise the roof. Uh, here's a question that one of our viewers sent in. What about omega-3 fatty acids? Can you tell us about those? Sure thing. You know, it's, it's, it's interesting you asked that question because I was just listening to one of my favorite podcasts over the weekend. Uh, it's called Plant Proof. So I recommend that to anybody out there who wants to learn more about nutrition in general. Uh, certainly evidence-based nutrition that comes straight from, you know, the best and the peer-reviewed literature. And the peer-reviewed literature is really going to be our best source of nutrition information. Uh, but of course, you know, learning how to interpret that and um, understand it is, is, a, is a big thing. And so that's why I really recommend resources like uh, a good dietitian like myself, who, you know, is able to, uh, who regularly reads the peer-reviewed information, as well as resources like nutritionfacts.org because there, Dr. Michael Greger, MD, is a wonderful resource. He reads hundreds and if there are thousands, uh, well, many different medical journals, thousands of articles every year. And he, you know, synthesizes them down into these great bite-sized videos and articles so that it makes the information much more accessible to the, um, the average layperson. Wonderful resource. And then Plant Proof is a wonderful podcast that you can listen to when you're out driving in the car, walking your dogs, going for a run or a hike. And again, wonderful evidence-based nutrition information. So I highly recommend it. And the, the host just had on a couple named Dean and Aisha Sherzai. They are medical doctors and researchers, and they specialize, they're neurologists. So they specialize in brain health. And of course, omega-3s are important when we're speaking about both our cardiovascular as well as the health of our brain. So they were just on the podcast speaking specifically about omega-3s. So I got some really wonderful up-to-date information about a new study that they're just publishing about omega-3 supplementation. And, um, and so, yes, omega-3s are very important. Um, what they found as a result of a certain type of analysis that they did, which is called a meta-analysis. Now, meta-analysis uses a number of criteria where they actually look at all the available studies on a given subject, and then they'll use inclusion and exclusion criteria to eliminate studies that they think don't really have to do with the particular focal point that they're looking for with their meta-analysis. So they eliminate, they throw out a bunch of studies that really don't fit and then they end up including in the meta-analysis somewhere between like 50 and 80 studies. And so that's what they did. And what they found was, is that um, yes, omega-3s are very important, um, but they couldn't determine whether or not um, supplementation was yes, probably a very good thing for both the elderly and both the very young people, like little children, but there wasn't enough evidence studying adults specifically, you know, people in like more the late teens to all the way through middle-aged adulthood wasn't enough information to determine whether or not it should be a firm recommendation that young adults specifically should supplement with omega-3s. Now, I personally, because I think it's a good insurance policy, so to speak, supplement with uh, with an algae based so that's vegan right it's not coming from fish we hear a lot about fish eating with omega-3s because yes fish the fatty the fatty fish specifically are rich in omega-3 fatty acids so we're thinking about things like salmon and tuna and other things like that um but you don't have but of course the fish get those omega-3s from you know these algae and um, these other uh, plants in, in the ocean that they consume and so we don't have to get it through the fish we can get it straight from the algae and there's a number of al algae based algae oil they're called omega-3s and what they have are these um, long chain omega-3 fatty acids one's called epa and the other one's called dha 
And so they, we, we think that EPA has more to do with our cardiovascular health. So the health of our vascular system and our hearts, and then DHA has more to do specifically with the health of our brains. And so if you're, if you're taking an algae-based omega-3 supplement that has EPA and DHA in it, um, again, it's a really good idea to think about with both little kids and elderly to definitely probably be taking one of these supplements. Now, if you're just an adult in between those two age groups, since there's not enough data to demonstrate whether it's, uh, it's an absolute, like it's like a for sure recommendation, uh, you might be able to get enough of those EPA and DHA through eating a precursor to those. Now, the body synthesizes EPA and DHA from a precursor known as ALA, and that's alpha linolenic acid. And that's the type of, it's again, omega-3 precursor. It's not officially an omega-3 like EPA and DHA are. Uh, because the body has to convert it into those other substances. But ALA comes from a lot of those healthy sources of omega-3 fats that we hear about, like walnuts, flax seeds, chia seeds, dark leafy greens. You even get some in berries, right? And so we can eat a number of these whole plant foods, specifically those fat-rich plant foods like hemp seeds, chia seeds, uh, flax seeds, and walnuts, I think are going to be the richest sources of alpha linolenic acid, ALA, um, that then gets converted by our body by, with a number of enzymes to EPA and then DHA as well. But there's an important point to make there, and that's that we know that there's another uh, essential fatty acid, right? Essential fatty acids are, are, are fats that we have to consume through our diet because our body cannot manufacture them. So there's other fats that our body can just use other substances and it can basically like building blocks like Legos. It can put together these fats that our bodies need to do different functions, you know, but essential fatty acids have to be consumed in our diet, right? Or through a supplement, but they have to be consumed. And so omega-3s and then omega-6s are both different forms of essential fatty acids. The problem with the, our modern standard American diet is we have a very high ratio of omega-6 to omega-3. And so we're getting a lot of omega-6 in our diet, but we're getting very little omega-3. And that's a problem. Because if you looked back historically when humans you know, didn't have access to all of the fast food and the processed foods and the junk foods that we eat today, the ratio between those two, omega-6 and omega-3 would have been much um, more similar, right? We would have been getting maybe a little bit more omega-6 than omega-3, but it would have been more like one to one or a two to one ratio, or maybe like a three to one at most. But many people now are getting 10 to one, 12 to one, maybe even more than 12 to one, omega-6 to omega-3. And that's a big problem because those enzymes that convert ALA into the EPA and the DHA that we need for our cardiovascular and our brain health, we need those things. They're very important for, for those you know, different parts of our bodies. <clears throat> excuse me, that's the same enzymes that convert ALA to EPA and DHA are also converting omega-6 to other things that we need in our body, you know, and so if we're eating a lot of omega-6, that's going to interfere with that whole process, and so we want to make sure, again, to eat less of those junky foods, less of the added oils and all the processed foods, more whole plant foods, and then I think it's wise if people can afford it, <clears throat> to think about taking a supplement, an, al an algae oil-based supplement would be a good idea that has that EPA and that DHA in it. And again, not enough data to prove that young adults <clears throat> absolutely need it. But if you're not going to take a supplement, I highly, highly encourage people to concentrate on eating dark leafy greens, ground flax, and ground chia seeds. You have to grind those seeds in order to get access to those healthy fats. Otherwise, the seeds just go right through you. Hemp seeds are also great, and then walnuts, and then other nuts and seeds are great as well, but those are going to be your highest sources. Awesome. I'm so happy because last time we talked, you talked about the importance of these seeds, and I've incorporated more chia seeds, hemp seeds, and flax seeds grounded uh, to my diet because I want to get healthy like that. 
And another thing, you know, people do talk about the, getting omegas from the fish and they forget that the fish nowadays is so polluted with chemicals and uh, drugs and all that, that you in plastic, that now if you're eating fish, you're ingesting all of that as well. But thank exactly. you for another interesting segment. See you again. Sounds great. Thanks, Nancy. Take care. Bye. Thank you for joining us on another episode of The Vegan Pulse. I am your host, Nancy Arenas. Remember to check out our blog, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and follow us on Facebook. And if you have a pulse, you have a purpose. Live vegan. <laughs>